Crazy Horse began to catch wind of trouble. Anticipating conflict, he took his wife to the Spotted Tail Agency, where she would be safe. Meanwhile, rumors abounded that he was going to bolt the reservation and escape onto the plains once again. And the Army believed these rumors. And it was decided, on Crook's orders, to arrest Crazy Horse. Upon Crazy Horse's return to Fort Robinson, he was told the commanding officer wanted to speak with him. He came in peacefully, thinking that he was coming to a meeting with the military leaders. Well, when they got him to the fort, an order was given to put him in the guardhouse. As Crazy Horse looked into the door of the guardhouse at Fort Robinson, Nebraska, he realized that yet once again he had been lied to. As he tried to extricate or escape that situation, he was grabbed by one of his own men and bayoneted in the kidneys by a US Army sentry. That instance, one could say, foretold the final chapter of the vision of the 14-year-old boy, when at the end of his vision, the rider in his dream at the end had been held by the hands of people before his death or end. Crazy Horse was immediately carried next door to the adjunct's office, where he was placed on the floor. Accompanied by his close friend, Touch the Clouds, and his father, he died painfully in the late hours of September 5th, 1877. Crazy Horse's death under the violent circumstances in which it occurred can be seen as the climax of an essentially tragic life, a life that in many respects was not only spectacularly successful within his own culture, but that was also tragic in the Shakespearean sense, and overlaying it all um, mystery because there is so much about Crazy Horse that we can never know now that uh, he's dead so shortly after exposing himself to the scrutiny that would have given history the records on which to assess him. If Red Cloud became a symbol of Lakota accommodation and Sitting Bull became a symbol of Lakota spiritualism, Crazy Horse became a symbol of Lakota resistance. The legendary warrior who fought to the bitter end, who never gave up, who struggled for his people and gave his life in defense of their way of life. It was only his body that was killed, not his spirit. For everything that dies today, die in physical but not in spirit. Somebody says that Crazy Horse doesn't need a tombstone because the earth was his marker. Because he believes that this land belongs to God, the Great Spirit, the, the Almighty. As we, the indigenous people, believe that we belong to the earth. And not the earth belonged to us. <laughs>